but we're almost there. We've got one, two, three, four, four more equations, and then we can get into the couple of word problems that we have. There's literally only one, two, three, four kinds of word problems. Okay, so this one. This one's some work. Some okay. Blurry, it is a little bit blurry. Uh, there it goes. So this one is going to take some work to get the equal zero here. It, that's why this topic is called solving a quadratic equation needing simplification. It's going to take some work to get it to equal to zero. Can, the, we, just, can we start by one side first? Yes. Which side is that? I'm going to start over here with a 2x squared and all what that. What are you going to do with all that? Uh, I'm going to take 2 and multiply the 2 by No. Two. You oh. cannot factor it until it, it is zero. equal to 0. Oh, okay. Right. Well, I guess I'm going to move all that to the other side. I would actually figure out what this is and what is it that you're going to move to the other side before you do that. Okay? So let's figure out what that is. What does that mean? It means it's an x minus 7 times another x minus 7, doesn't it? Yep. And so let's foil that out. I get x squared minus 7x minus 7x, 7x and then positive 49. 49. So now I know. Right. 14, okay. Now, which way do I need to start moving things? Because remember, we want a positive x squared. So if I move these two over there, aren't I going to have to minus them? If I move these two over there? I would have to minus it. And what's this 1 minus 2? It's going to be a negative, negative 1. one right. That's not what I want, right, right? right? So then let's move these guys over to this side. So we'll minus the x squared. We'll add, you can put them together and just say add 14x, right? Because those together are a negative 14x. Yeah. So I add 14x and then, I and then subtract, subtract 49. 49. So that will cancel that. This 14 positive will cancel both of these negatives, and then that will cancel that. So I'll have 0 over here. On the left-hand side, what will I have? Uh, you're going to have x squared, because uh, then it's going to be minus x. Mm -hmm. And then that minus, that should be 20. 29 minus 40? Mm -hmm. What That's sign? That's negative 20. Negative 20. Yeah. And then what factors of 20 subtract to give me a 1, the invisible Five 1? Four. 5 and 4. And then who's going to be what? The plus 5 is going to be the plus and then the... Uh, These are different. This tells me the sign of who? Who's going who's to be the bigger one? Right. Who's the bigger one? The 5 is the bigger So the 5 should be negative. Negative, yep. And then now you can tell me the answers. What are the two answers? Positive 5 and negative 4. You got it. But that one was some work, right? You had to multiply it all out, move everybody around, then you could finally factor and get the answers. Can you leave that up there for like just one, sure. one second, please? Try that one. First step, right, is to foil that left side. So when you do that, you get 3y squared plus 6y minus y minus 2. Then I went ahead and just combined the like terms so that I only had y's and not two different terms with y. So I have 3y squared plus 5y minus 2. Now it made more sense to move the 3 over there because then I would have a positive y squared, right? Versus if I minus 4 over there, then I'm going to end up with a negative y squared. So I moved all of these guys over to that side. So I minus 3y squared minus 5y and added 2 and did the same thing on the right hand side so all these guys canceled and gave me 0 this gave me just 1y squared these guys canceled as well and this gave me negative 4 that's a difference of a perfect squares right so we got y plus 2 and y minus 2 y times y is y squared 2 times 2 is 4 right and then one with the plus one with the minus and then if you set each one equal to zero, this one will give you negative two, and that one, when you move it over, will give you positive two, right? So good. Good, good, good. Okay. This one says roots of a product of polynomials. Now, I think the thing here is 
these guys are not factored completely. They're factored, aren't they? But they're not factored completely. Is there a GCF I can take from these two guys? Yeah. I could take out a seven, seven from there. and you get this. Yeah. And these two guys actually can factor because what multiplies to give me 14 but adds to give me nine? You're gonna get U plus seven and U plus two. Mm -hmm. yeah. And now that it's all factored, you're supposed to set each factor equal to zero. So here I would get U equal to negative two, here I would get u equal to negative 7. Here I would get u equal to 3. Right? Positive 3. Positive 3, yeah. This, does it have any u's in it? Nope. So you can't set that equal to 0. All right, copy that. Right? 7 is not going to equal 0, ever. Right? So don't worry about the coefficient in the front. So I have my two answers, or three answers, actually. These are my three solutions. Give me one second. I'm just writing it down, okay? Sure. There I go, running out of ink again. <laughs> I'm just going to go get another package because I think I'm about, all I have left is this pink and this bright blue. And those are usually not my favorite. So what about this one? Does this have something I can factor? You can factor three out of this. Mm-hmm. And if I do, what do I have? You get V minus one. And can I factor that? Yep. Factors of four that subtract to give me three. Uh, one times four. Uh-huh. So, but your four needs to be your bigger number, right? Right. Well, it is my I bigger mean, number, but it needs positive. to be positive. It's positive, and then that needs to be negative. Yes, and now then, we'll get it. Then you get to V, you know, first one to be positive one. The second negative, one? Negative one, and then... No. I mean, positive one. Positive one. And then uh, negative four. And negative four. And this one is not going to equal zero, right? right? Have a U in it. But notice these two are the same. So you only got to write it one time. One you time. One and four is your answer. Yes. Four. That one's just a repeated solution, solution. right? Right. Is anything, well, I guess I shouldn't ask now. What? I'm going to ask, is anything ever going to happen to the three later on down, like in college algebra? Yes, that three will tell me <laughs> oh, on your graph, how right. the ends look in my graph. graph. Okay. Yes, All it right. will. So just, we'll just, that three will be important later. <laughs> right now, it just doesn't give me any. Yeah, you're not needing it for anything right now. Just FYI. I mean, I guess I can say it now because eventually I'm going to have to. But when you're solving equations, when you set this whole thing equal to zero, each one of these solutions on a graph is an x-intercept. Okay. All the time? All the time. So this is actually v times 2 is a cube. This is actually a cubic function. If I were to multiply it all out, it would have a v cubed, right? right? So it's a cubic function. This would tell me whether the ends of that cubic function are going to positive infinity or negative infinity or which oh, way. Oh, okay. going down. Yeah. Okay. And then I would have two x-intercepts here. This one I would cross through because it was only one solution one time. Mm -hmm. This one had a double solution, so, so it would actually bounce off of that x-intercept. Right. So eventually we'll get to that and you'll get to practice it. But all this information tells me a lot. I could graph this thing already pretty much. Okay. I wouldn't know how high or how low my little peaks would go, my peaks and valleys, but I could... I could pretty much graph it just based off of this information. What's the purpose? Okay, like with our degrees or like, mm -hmm. you know, well, what's the purpose of knowing to, how to, how to graph it? Yeah, what's the purpose of that? Well, like, there's two it? things. There's one is if you have something that behaves like a cubic function behaves, you can get certain information based off of the graph. So like you can figure out like, oh, well, I don't know, if you make it costs so much to produce this kind of material and that cost is represented by a cubic function well when will i break even with my profit and my oh, my e-loss loss or okay. you know when do i need to put so much material into it or beyond that it's not going to work things like that okay. so it could have a purpose it just it's so it, re it relies on whatever you're talking about to behave like a cubic function okay, okay? And that's why eventually, in college algebra, you eventually start getting into models. So what does this behave like? Does it behave like a squared function? Does it behave like a cube function? Okay. Does it behave 
like a, a exponential That's function, function. Okay. like what does it behave like and that's what models are um, and so that way you can use all these things. The second thing, which is like the underlying thing, right? Is so that we can practice our exercise, our brains, yeah, right? With that <laughs> the reticular, reticular system. system. Yes. <laughs> so we're exercising our brains with all this craziness. Cause yes, there are calculators out there that will tell me everything I need to know, but we need to get in the manual practice so that we can exercise our muscles. I mean, I don't get to work out by watching somebody else work out, right? I got to actually get in there and do the work. So that's what, this is what, this is us, right? <laughs> We're getting in there and doing the work, okay? So we have four, I think, word problems. This one's not really a word problem, but it's kind of. So you remember when I told you all the stuff about lines, and then I told you, okay, here's some information about a line. Now give me the equation of the line. You remember that? Here's the slope and here's a point. Mm -hmm. Give me the equation. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well now, they're doing the same thing, but with quadratics, which is the trinomials, okay? So they're telling me, oh, well, here's your roots. Roots is another word for solutions, which we know about, right? And then I even mentioned to you that those solutions actually tell you stuff about x-intercepts, don't I? There's also another word because you get these answers, the x-intercepts and the solutions, by setting each little parentheses equal to zero, right? So you actually can call them zeros as well. So there's four different names for the same thing. <laughs> but if you have a quadratic equation or a polynomial equation, if you have the whole thing equal to zero and you solve it, right? Those solutions are called solutions, of course. They're also called roots, they're also called your x-intercepts, and they're also called the word zeros, okay? So the number five can be a quote-unquote zero. Does that make sense? You gotta no. be careful with your words. No. That's just the name, okay? But how's it gonna be zero, though? Because we setting it to zero? You, because you got the five by oh, setting it by to zero. It, it. Exactly. Okay, there we go. <laughs> yes. Right. Okay. So when they say write this equation so that your roots or my solutions are one and six and whose leading coefficient is three. Remember I talked to you about over here, you asked me, does that three matter? That three and that seven are the leading coefficients. Yeah. Okay? okay? So when they tell me this, think of the solutions first. You're telling me that X equals one and X equals six. Yeah. We'll go backwards. How did you get the one and the six? Didn't you have this beforehand? Yeah. Right, and you moved over the one and that's how you got x equal to one? Yeah. So I'm kind of going backwards, right? This one too, if I were to move that over, I get this, right? Isn't this what your two factors were? If you were doing the problem the other way? So these are your factors, right? And then you're gonna put three in front of it. And then you have to put your leading coefficient in front of it, exactly. Mm -hmm. So you're just going backwards from what you had before. The fast way is you put the leading coefficient in the front. You put x minus your root, x minus your other root. We'll call this one root 1 and root okay. 2. And that should equal 0. In your book, let me see what letter they use. In your little pamphlet here, it tells you. Yeah, I wasn't going to write the whole word, right? <laughs> Leading coefficient. No, no, I'm long, doing this on my notes, that's all. A long thing. How are you not going to tell me this information, little pamphlet? You are missing all the polynomial stuff. They do not tell me. We'll have to elaborate on our polynomials when it comes to test time. Um, 
but usually when you have it, you have the leading coefficient in the front, and then you have like x minus c, or sometimes they use k, but they write it like that. Instead of writing the word root in root, they just put c and c1 and c2. Because they may be different or they may be the same, right? So what would this equation look like then? Knowing the shortcut, right? The little formula for it. You're going to put 2 in the front? You're going to put 2 in the front. Uh, and you can say x. Hold on. Because you got a negative x minus 5, x minus 1? No. Okay. x minus this negative 5. Yeah. And, then and x, x minus, minus the negative, negative 1. Okay. Equal to 0. That. And then clean that up. When you, you have a double say, negative, yeah, it's what? Say x plus 5. Correct. Yeah, x plus 1. X plus right, 1. Copy that. Copy that. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing because if x equals this, when you move it over, doesn't it become x plus 5? And same thing, if x equals that, when you move that over, it'll become plus 1. So whether you're doing it the method I did where I went backwards or you're just memorizing the little setup, you still should be able to get there. And there's, you will see this more when we get to the bigger polynomials later in college algebra. So this will come back, okay? There'll just be a whole bunch of them, not just two, okay? Now, oh, I cannot move on because this is not the final answer that the computer wants. I didn't even go there. This oh, is not what the computer okay. wants. The computer wants it to look like a quadratic equation. All that means is that they need you to multiply this out, okay? With the three and all of it? You got to multiply it out. So what I do is I multiply the three in first, and I'm going to come up here. So that would be 3x minus 3. Yep. And then just foil it with the x minus 6. So oh. you get 3x squared minus 18x minus. Minus, 3X mm -hmm. minus plus, 18. plus 18. And then combine those guys. And that's what they, they want. want. Okay, I almost forgot to mention that because you'll keep trying to type this in there and it might keep telling you no, that's not a quadratic. <laughs> It is just factored. Here I have more room so I can do it without having to go to the side. We have to do the same thing down there mm -hmm. too. Because oh, that's okay. the way it wants okay. the answers. Okay. So foil okay. that one. And then if I combine these things, uh huh, and then the 10. And that they want. So just remember for these, we got the setup, but we actually have to work it all out to give them the quadratic. Whenever they say that word quadratic, your brain should already be thinking this. Okay? These two guys can be missing. That guy will never be missing if you're talking about a quadratic. Okay? What can be missing? These guys could be missing. Like I could have this and that's still considered a quadratic. Or I could have that and that's yeah, still considered a quadratic. A quadratic. Right. Just this guy. If this guy's missing, you're not talking about a quadratic. You're talking about a linear now. Right? Yep. So that's all. But when you see quadratic, you should automatically be thinking it's going to look like that that sort of trinomial. And so notice that this does not look like that kind of trinomial, does it? So I had to multiply it out, and now it does look like a trinomial. Okay, now how do we use this stuff? I think there are three problems that we have. So this one says solving a word problem using a quadratic equation with rational roots. So it says the area of a rectangle, so the area, and I draw, the area of a rectangle is equal to 66 millimeters squared. The length of the rectangle, the length of the rectangle is, is the equal sign, one meter more than, so one meter more than twice the width. 
which means two times the width. Does that look like it makes sense? I literally wrote it was what it said, right? The length, I used L, of the rectangle is, is the equal sign, one more than, which means one plus, right? And then twice the width means to take your width and multiply it by two, right? It says find the dimensions of the rectangle. Well, this is going to require some of that strategy from systems of equations. Because how do you calculate the area of a rectangle? Uh, it's length times width. It's length times width. Yeah. And I know how to write length. Instead of writing L, I can write... One. Yep, that mm -hmm. right here. So instead of writing this L, I'm going to write 1 plus 2W. But this W is still there and still multiplied, isn't it? Are you talking about the regular W in the formula? Mm -hmm. This yeah. W from the formula is still there. So I yeah. had to still bring the times W down. All I did was put this instead of L. Yep. Yep. Everything else stayed all the same, right? Mm -hmm. But now you have like back end distribution, right? Yeah. You have it's going to be W, 1 W yep. plus 2 w, w squared, squared. Yep. equal to 66. Yep. There's a square, which means I need to have zero. So minus 66. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to put them in order. So my w squares need to be in the front. That's a positive 2w. This is a positive w, and that's a negative 66. So now they're in order, right, with the correct signs and everything. Oh gosh, 2 times 66, 2 times 66. Is that 132? Uh-huh, and then I got to get 1. I have a feeling that 11 goes into that. Let me see. Oh yeah, 11 times 12. Oh, yeah. I could have sworn. I was like, I know that's in my times table chart <laughs> somewhere. You're going to make 12 your bigger one. Yes, so 2w squared, positive 12w, negative 11w, and then minus 66. Chop it. This side has 2w in common. Bring down my minus. This side has 11 in common. And then they have the w plus 6 in common. Now, there's two answers here, right? I'll let you finish writing all that real quick. <clears throat> uh-huh so what are the two answers negative six and positive 11. um you still gotta divide by two oh, right okay uh, 11 over two 11 over two does it make sense for your width to be negative it shouldn't be because you're just doing the area of something you just right time. And because if it's negative it's gonna be shorter if it's negative it's like within itself. Yeah, it's like, it don't make <laughs> this sense doesn't like make that. any sense. No, so make for sense. the word problem, there's called context clues, right? And a negative width doesn't make any sense. Yeah. You can't be negative, negative width. width. So this one doesn't make any sense. So this has to be my width. But the problem says find the dimensions, plural. That means I have to find both the width and the length. So my width, I can say, is if I put that as a decimal, 5.5 meters so this one I found but I still need to figure out what the length is and how do we do that we could plug it right here wouldn't that tell me what the length is yeah so it'd be L equals 1 plus 2 times 5.5 which means 1 plus 11 which gives me 12 and again meters and so now I know the length as well Right, 5.5 times 2. Yeah, it's 5.5. Okay. Yeah. Let me write that little note here too. With cannot be 
negative. Time either. So if you start getting into problems and you're talking about time, time can't be negative either. You can't go back in time, right? <laughs> so don't have pay attention to the context clues. Width, length, height, none of those can be negative. Time, none of them. Okay, let's look at these. These have to do with the Pythagorean theorem. So the topic will literally say Pythagorean theorem. And the Pythagorean theorem is this guy, right? A squared plus B squared equals C squared. You just have to remember these two are from the legs. And this one is from the hypotenuse. And how do you know which ones are legs and which ones are the hypotenuse, right? Look for the box, okay? Around the box are the legs, and then across from the box is your hypotenuse, okay? So these two guys are basically attached to the little box. This guy is across the box. So he'll be like the opposite side of the box, okay? So immediately you have to identify that. If you see the little box, just draw an arrow. Let's see. Got it? The other one. Well, I didn't even draw the box, but <laughs> there was supposed to be a box here. So then the guy across from him is automatically the C. Okay? The other two, it doesn't matter, right? Because you're going to square them and you're going to add them. It doesn't matter whether you add in this order or if you swap it and add in the other order. It really makes no difference. But these two guys are the legs. Okay? And down here, these two guys are the legs. So let's plug everybody into that formula. I'm going to put this leg, 20 squared, plus this leg, x squared, yep. equal to the hypotenuse squared, which is 25 squared. So let's see. I know this one's 400. I think the other one is 625, but double check. Yeah, 625. So I can solve this not too hard. I can minus 400 on both sides. I get 225. And then if you want to get rid of a square, what would have had to have been squared to get 225? If you want, you can square root both sides. That pops the house off. And what's the square root of 225? 112.5? No, it's 15. No, I, know. I, mean, I did it wrong. Oh. <laughs> oh I messed up. It's 15. Okay. And really, you get positive and negative 15. Whenever you take the square root of something, you, you should always be getting two answers. It's going to come in handy later. But for right now, context clues, right? You're finding the length of a side. Does it make sense for the length of the side to be negative no. 15? No. So negative 15 does not make sense. Therefore, positive 15 is the only answer you've got here. Okay? Anytime you put a square root into an equation on both sides, you're automatically going to get two answers. Because isn't negative 15 times negative 15 also equal to 225 positive? Right? So there is, that is a solution to the equation. It's just not the solution that I need. Okay? This one's if I do one leg squared, 10 squared, plus the other leg squared, which is 12 squared, hypotenuse squared, x squared. All I gotta do is multiply those out and add them together. So 244. And notice the directions say round to the nearest hundredth. That's because that one is not perfect. 244. If I take the square root here, you get two and then six yeah, but hit the, the little, the little, wavy, line. little wavy thing, or the double arrow, six, you two, get 15.620, blah, 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 right? Blah, blah, yeah. Okay, it says round to the nearest hundredth. So this is 10, 
tenths, hundredths. Is that zero going to change this to? No. So it's just 15.62. And it can't be negative. And it can't be negative, so I'm only going to take the positive. Okay. So if we round and omit negative solution. Oops, so that's what we did there. To go from here to here, we rounded our answer and we omitted the negative solution because it doesn't make sense for the length of a triangle to be negative. Okay, last one. So this one is the word problem involving the Pythagorean theorem. So it's the same stuff. It's just now it's got a bunch of words on it, right? But they still give you a diagram. So you, technically you wouldn't even need to read the paragraph, but it's always helpful just to co get context clues, right? So it says a kite flying 24 feet off the ground. So this is the ground level and it's up 24 four feet that's what the image is telling us its line is pulled taut that just means like it's completely straight there's no curve or anything like that in the line um, and it casts a 10 foot shadow so here's where the line is I don't know how long that string is but I know it's completely straightened out and I know that this whole thing from the kites tip to the bottom of the line it's costing causing a 10 foot shadow okay um, the find the length of the line round to the nearest tenth. So you want to find out how long that line is. Okay. So remember, across from the box is which value? Uh, C. The C. Okay. The other guy are the legs. Yeah. So I'm going to say 10 squared plus 24 squared equals, and you can use C because they didn't give me a variable, right? Yep. So it just says question mark. Uh huh. You're going to get uh, 576 for the 24 squared. Mm -hmm. C squared. So you then 676, 676 and when you take the square root, you get 26. 26 point what? Or is it just even? Just even 26. Oh, Unless wow. I messed up, you might want to check it. Let's you know check. I, I got brain parts from time to time. Yep, perfect. Then I don't have to round. It's just 26. Now, technically, it's plus or minus 26. And I yeah. want you to get in that habit because when you get okay. to, to college algebra or even calculus, don't forget that guy, okay? There are two answers. It's just the negative doesn't make any sense yeah, for us. Right. So 26 is the only solution we take. <clears throat> and that's it. That's the end. So let me stop this.